And here's a guy who's showing up for the first time. Uh, well, Mani Panera is also there. Jerry Simlani is out That's for the right. first time. He did not play the first half, but he will be pitted up against probably Abbott Kudab. Now they're going to put a king on Kudab, and so Salami is going to take Riedelman on the defensive end. Well, Tommy is sticking it out with his reliables. Brandy Fabiosa and Otto Iko quarterbacking. And Yoya Vilamin is also there as a power forward. And we've got a center slot man in Abid Gidabin. Freddy Ubalde is the other forward. Uh, unproductive thrust by the Crispa Redmanizers. The rebound goes to Jerry Samlani, making his presence felt on the floor for the first time with a great rebound. Good shot. Abid King. Pocketing his eighth point of the evening, cutting down a crisp lead somewhat to 13 points. So we're 35 seconds into the third quarter. Marty Saldana versus Bernie Fabiosa, Freddy Ubalde versus Mani Paner. The back pass to Didabin. He eludes Abe King for that great mid range shot. Yeah, it's good pump fake by Abe Kudabin that time. We have a long pass to King. He can't handle it, but he saves the ball. That was a tightrope act pulled off by Abe King. Oh, Jump shot on the run, the, yes. Goes to the <laughs> Misses again. Well, you got to hand it to him. He had terrific hustle, but not the accuracy. Fabiosa with a fancy pass to Freddy Ubalde, who puts it in. And Ubalde has a lot of moves. That time he used the left hand to get the layup. And it's 62-45, 17-point lead for the Crisper Redmanizers. Looks like uh, Tommy Manotok has unleashed the full power of the Redmanizers on the hapless gold eagle men tonight. But then the game is far from over. Here's Ato Iko missing on an acrobatic layup. And Yoya Villamin was fouled on the follow-up. And that was one of those fouls where Manny just said, you're not going to score this. <laughs> All right. You have to earn it from the foul line. You bet. <laughs> it is a replay. Cole misses the shot. Villamin gets the rebound, goes up, and Panair <laughs> fouls him. <laughs> Well, Manny Paner has his counterparts in the other teams. Vic Sanchez for the <laughs> Every Beer team houses. seems to have one, huh? Right. The Enforcers, they play a very important role, too. The man at the strike would probably be the enforcer for the Crispa team. <laughs> exactly. 64-45. That's a 19-point lead for Crispa now. They're looking to break the 20-point barrier. Marty Saldana versus Bertie Paviosa. Here's Jerry Samlani, quickly picked up by Abid Gidabin. He challenges Gidabin and succeeds in defying Gidabin. Yes, I don't think Gidabin thought he was going to take that shot. He did not have his hands up that time. Samlani took it like he's been taking it all his life. Right. 64-47. Chris Belit down somewhat to 17 points. Yoya Villamin. Oh, great defensive job there by Samlani. This guy is turning out to be a powerhouse for Gold Eagle. I wonder why Nat Canson uh, didn't feel him at all in the first half. Well, they gave Bonatti a chance in the first half to prove himself. They have a lot of big men on this team, a lot of centers. That's true, too. Oh, there, look at that. He's even getting the bounces, huh? Samlani with four quick points for Gold Eagle, but that's still a whopping 15-point margin for Crispa. Cole goes beyond his screen, set up by Benjamin and cashes in. 12 points now for Atoy. Cole is one of those players that can shoot under any conditions. He seems to be able to fade away from the basket, be falling down on the floor, and still get his shot off. No surprise that he's the very first man in the PBA to score 10,000 points. <laughs> Marty Saldana tried a ploy there, but it didn't work. It was just tapped out of bounds, so there's going to have to be a baseline inbound for the Gold Eagle Beer Men. Good. What a escape back there by Dante Gonzalo. You know, with that hook, I didn't think he could squeeze in between two crisp defenders, but he did. Yes, good pass by Monty Sedania that time, too. 66-51. Chris Pali down to 14 points after they hovered on the brink of a 20-point lead. And Freddy Ubalde quickly gets back two points for the Red Manizers, which drew spontaneous applause from the predominantly crisp fanatics in the gallery. We should call Ubalde the magic man. He has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Yes, sir. Jerry Samlani. Oh, this time. Every day can't be Sunday for him. <laughs> Samlani acted like he didn't want the ball that time. Huh? Right. Dante Gonzalgo. He knew what he was doing, but the shot won't go. And a loose ball foul is spotted by the baseline ref. And that time we had V. Lemin surrounded by four Gold Eagle players, and this is supposed to be their defensive board. So the Crisper Floral team has to do a better job of boxing out. Well, that was the second team foul for Crispa against only one for Gold Eagle. Here's Marty Saldana making his move of Fabiosa. King firing from the 15-foot line. The ball is very merciless. And here's Freddy Obaldi going up against... Ah, oh, nothing Abe King could do to stop that. 
Once again, we talked about it before. We talked about it at halftime before the game. The Gold Eagle team has to get back on defense. This Crispa Floral team loves to run. That's true. And they haven't done that yet. 70-51 is the count. 19-point lead for Crispa. 8-16 left in the third period. That was a cliffhanger there for Crispa. And here's Dante Gonzalo harassing Atoiko. Gonzalo takes a tumble. Atoiko is inside the paint, and he eventually loses it to Jerry Samlani. He throws oh. a bad pass to Gonzago. It's going to be a turnover for the Crispa Floral team. Panera goes out. Loizaga comes in. Well, that's what you call a comedy of errors on both sides of the floor. Here's Fabiosa, picked up by Saldana after a pick set up by Didabin. And again, Fabiosa romped away with two points. It's 13th of the evening, and that's a 21-point lead right there on the scoreboard for the Redmondizers. Any chance here of Gold Eagle coming back? Uh, now if they keep turning the ball over like this, they had 17 turnovers at halftime. I'm sure they had at least five so far here in, in the second half. That's true. Here's King. Well, oh, good defensive job by Abe King forcing Abid Gidabin to bounce the ball off his foot. Yes. Uh, maybe Abid Gidabin is planning to cut off a portion of that foot for being too long. <laughs> All right. Ball is on the Gold Eagle side, and, uh, and the Abid basket King. is counted on yes. this. That's a foul by Yoyo Villamin. That's his fourth personal. Abbey King looking for Grand Slam. The score is 72-53. Chris lead down to 19. And here's Philip Cesar. Well, I guess he'll have to tuck his shirt in. Isn't there anything in the rules that says you've got to have your shirt tucked in? Yes, the referee is telling him right now to tuck his shirt in. All right. This Sunday, May 20, watch out for two very interesting features. Grosby Inside Basketball right after the live telecast with Freddie Webb discussing team defense. And PBA Mailbox at halftime of the late telecast with this Sunday's special guest, the BJ himself, Sonny Jaworski. That was Abe King coming through with his second charity, 70, uh, with his Grand Slam, 72-54. Time left, seven and a half minutes left in the third period. Fabiosa, guarded by Samlani. Ubaldi fakes, drives now, and is almost... Had his pocket pick there. How do you go to fadeaway? That's the 14th point of the game for Atoy Co. He seems to be warming up. 74-54, 20-point market for the Christopher Redmondizers. That was poor shot selection by Joe Leizaga. There was nobody there for the possible offensive rebound, and Atoy Co. was unable to field that baseball pitch, so the ball goes right back to Gold Eagle. And we're seeing some sloppy basketball right now. Uh, that last shot by Loizaga, nobody was in good offensive rebound position. He should try to shore up his shot selection. Exactly. And here's Samlani losing it after a swarm of Christmas defenders nearly swiped the ball away. Abhi King unmolested that time for his 13th point. So What's now, going on here, Norman Block? The erratic pass by Atoy Coach. I guess this is what happens when you get up 20 points. Huh? Right. Looks like the uh, Crispa Redmondizers are dead set on blowing the Gold Eagle beer men all the way to next Tuesday. <laughs> They're up by 19, 18 points, 74, 56 with 6 minutes and 37. Normally, a uh, lead like that can still be surmounted, but not the way Gold Eagle has been playing. Well, Atoy Kohes just picked up his fourth foul by Cristobal. will be into the game. We have a timeout, Joe. We'll be right back. With their backs to you are the Grand Slam champions of last year, the Christopher Redmondizers riding high on an 18-point lead, 74 to 56, with six minutes and 35 seconds left in the third period. Another lucky player, by the way, is going to receive a Magnolia Chocolate gift certificate right after this match for winning our Magnolia Chocolate Best Player of the Game award. And we still don't know who that awardee is going to be. Marty Saldana. Swings the ball to the right side, uh, looking for Dante Gonzalo, who is immediately picked up by Freddy Obalde. He defies Freddy Obalde for that sailing layup, very gracefully executed. Nobody came over to help that time. Gonzalo just went straight to the hoop as he leaned to his right and laid it up. 74-58, Chris Polite down to 16, but that's still a mighty tall hill for the Gold Eagle Beer men to climb. It can be climbed, however, make no mistake about that. Plenty of time left. Get up in. Moves to better shooting position. Short. Fabiosa follows up. Oh, he's going to be called on it for a charge on that play. That was a very close call that time. As Fabiosa just went straight up in the air, but he was called for leaning in. That's his second foul. A heartbreaker there for Bernie Fabiosa. He put up a very good shot, only to be nullified by a foul. 16 foul for Chris Press against only one for Gold Eagle. And here's Donnie Gonzalo. 
And now he draws a double team. He looked for the open man, but the biker stubble got into the picture. And here is Bernie Patiosa. They filled the lane so beautifully, not even a juggernaut could have stopped them from the Nazis. Well, it wasn't very hard to fill the lanes that time, Joe. No player for the Gold Eagle team was back on defense. Exactly. And thereby lies the weak link in the entire play of the Gold Eagle Beermen. They just don't come down fast enough on defense. But that was a great backdoor play there by Gonzago as he went in for the layup. And it's 76-60, still a 16-point lead there for the Red Blazers. 5:21 left, third chapter. I can't exactly say it's an unfolding epic because it's been anything but that in the last few minutes. What with the lopsided score right now. Obaldi makes his move off Dante Gonzalgo and gets a foul from the Iron Man. The Iron Man because this guy used to be a shot putter. And it seems to be the same way on both ends, Joe. Uh, Gonzalo's trying to post Ubalde up down on this end, on Gold Eagle's end, and on, up here on Crispa's end. Ubalde's trying to take Gonzago one-on-one. All right. It's tip for chat, both ends of the floor. Now we've got a double team on Abed Gidabin. Quickly, Cesar gets it back to Gidabin to turn around. Door draws a foul from Samani. Oh, no, Abed King. And that, and that shows you just how much respect Cesar has for Gidabin's ability. He was double teamed, but Cesar passed it back to him anyway. That's a great combination right there, Rabbit Kidabin and Philip Cesar. Between the two of them, they can probably score 50 points if they really put their hearts and souls into a game. And here is a very deft dribbling by Marty Saldana. He goes all the way to the bucket. Oh, great shot by Saldana. You put a lot of awkward in the shot, but they have to get back on defense. Here comes Crystal Flaw. Look at Bernie Papiosa. I, I don't believe it. A lot of people are blinking their eyes to see if they saw something that was real. I hope we can get that on the replay. We can. Look at that. He's on the ground, and he still banks the shot home. And this is a guy that's not noted for his scoring, Joe. This Christopher Floral all. team is very strong. But this season, he really came out with a lot of offense in his mind. <laughs> Danny Gonzalez draws a swarm of defenders. Here's Joey Saga inside heavy traffic. He almost loses it, but look at him hustling for that ball. And there's a scramble. We've got a foul. Gonzalgo will have to pick it up. That's his second personal. And the fourth team foul for Gold Eagle. You know, I have a feeling Bernie Fabiosa felt his duty to do that kind of a trick after uh, Marty Saldana ran rings around him on the Gold Eagle side of the court earlier. Oh, Cristobal wide open. Good pump fake that time to get Abe King to go up in the air. He had the easy layup after that. 80-62, 18 point marker for the Red Manizers. 3.54 left in the third quarter. And another wow, contact whistle, this time addressed to Abid Gidabin, his fourth personal. And the seventh team foul for Crispa. Let's see if Gold Eagle can get some mileage out of this foul situation that Crispa has found itself in very early. Not really very early, but uh, well, with a good three minutes and 53 seconds left in the third quarter. Well, Gudabin's going to leave the game now as Israel comes in for them, and that's a good break for the Gold Eagle team because, of course, Gudabin is a tower of strength. He stands 6'5". He's a very big player to have there underneath. And the man in the limelight right now is the franchise of Gold Eagle, Abe King, born in Longapo City and now raised sides in Cavite. He is married to the former beauty queen, Ligaya Pasquale. He stands 6 feet 3 and... He was born July 23, 1957, which makes him only 26 years old. He will be 27 in July. Freddy Ubaldi with Philip Cesar cutting in. Contact whistle interferes. That's what I was talking about before for the Gold Eagle team. That time, Cesar faked away, then cut to the basket and got the pass. 340 left in the game clock for the third period. Gold Eagle still has two fouls to spare. Freddy Ubaldi swings over to the right side behind a pick set up by Philip Cesar. Cristobal now top of the key, watched by Joey Loizaga. Philip Cesar asking for the pass. He got it, and Abe King nearly swiped it away. Cesar regained his composure but misses the shot. Marty Saldana again, bringing the ball down court for the Gold Eagle beer men. They're going to go on a half court offense. And then before they can set it up, a beautiful steal by Bernie Papiosa. Look at him. He is going to make this a piece of cake. Great steal by Fabiosa that time. He just, well, Sadania wasn't very careful with the ball. He put it right in Fabiosa's face. You have to keep your arm up there to protect the ball in case somebody reaches in. You know, Marty Saldana has fast become, or is fast gaining a reputation. Well, we'll continue with that dissertation right after this time out. Two minutes and 56 seconds left in the third period. Brisbane still with a 19-point lead. Looks like they're going to break that 20-point barrier again, and that came through the courtesy of Mike Ristobal, a dazzling baseline drive and a reverse layup. 
And they seem to be running rings around the Gold Eagles team right now. They're just going out on their fast break and scoring points. Good shot by Abe came from about 18 feet. Well, that was an isolated moment of brilliance there for Gold Eagle. They need a lot more of that. I think they need a cluster of that to get back into the game. It's 84-65, Chris Pop by 19. Uh, Bernie Fabiosa gets it over to Philip Cesar. And by the word, by uh, Northern Consolidated fans would be very pleased to know that coach Ron Jacobs is back in town. As a matter of fact, he is here at ringside scouting this game, which is a trademark of the Consolidated coaching staff. They always scout every game of their opponents, and that makes a lot of difference. And that's why they are right there on top of the list, right behind the Great Taste and Crispa. And speaking of Northern Consolidated further, if you'd like to know more about Hector Calma, well, stay tuned for our Andy Player Winner's Profile coming to you right after this live telecast. Winner's Profile brought to you by Andy Player Special Whiskey, the real whiskey for real winners. Willie Pearson is preparing to replace somebody from the crisp lineup, and it's going to be Ubaldi. Mike Cristobal waiting to inbound. Okay, not Kansun also grabs the opportunity to replace Joey Loizaga with Bokio Lochenko. So, Bokio will be Marta Saldana's backcourt partner for Gold Eagle from here on in. Mike Cristobal gets a screen from Padim Israel. 25 second violation by the Red Manizers, and they weren't even aware of it. Yes, that wasn't very smart by the Red Manizers. Uh, they substituted that time. They forgot about the shot clock and went off on, on them. It'll be a turnover for the Gold Eagle team. Joe, the Gold Eagle team has enough time to get back in this game, but they're not doing the things they have to do to, to try to ease their way back into it. They have to start getting back on defense. That's a good shot right there. That's a good start by Gonzago on a good pass from Sedania. Well, I might. Go on so far as to say that Johnny Gonzalo is one of the few guys in the Gold Eagle lineup trying to keep this team in the contest. The next one, of course, Boki Lochinko. Yes, Lochinko just poor um, inbounds pass by the Crisp team. Lochinko just snuck in there and laid it up. 84 71, still a 13 point lead for the Redmanizers. Brandy Fabiosa quickly comes back with two points of his own to make it another 15 point bubble for the Grand Slam champions. And he has 19 points in the game. He's the leading scorer for the Crispa team. Boki Lauchenko goes to position, tries a glass shot, misses. Dante Gonzalgo hustling in there for the offensive rebounds. Oh, good play by Pearson. by Pearson. Yes, they're going to call it off Pearson. He say he stepped on the out-of-bounds line, even though he did knock the ball off of Gonzalgo. So Gonzalgo will inbound from the baseline. Time left, 47.7 seconds. Three-point shot attempted by Marty Saldana. That's a desperation move. I'll be King from the two-point zone. Got it. 18 points now for King. But like I said, those heroics are coming too few and far between. Well, they're down by 13 now with 27 seconds left. They get another steal. They have a two-on-one fast break. Let's see if they can convert. Yes, they do. Dante Gonzalgo. Oh, he's playing the game of his life tonight. He's fast blossoming into a real pro. And the carelessness on the crisp of part as far as they're handling the ball is causing this comeback by the Gold Eagle team. Well, the Red Manizers apparently are laying back after they erected that 21-point lead. Well, they better wake up soon enough. Otherwise, they just might find themselves scrambling towards the end game. Yes, a uh, foul was just called on Cesar for illegal block. That's his third foul. He almost got called for a technical foul by referee Dela Cruz. Instead, Dela Cruz called a warning on him. 8.9 seconds left in the third period, 86-75, oh, blown opportunity by the Gold Eagle beer man. Philip Cesar looks at the clock, it says one second. A uh, good steal by Abbey King prevented what could have been the last two points of the third quarter for Chris So It's 86-75, and it looks like Gold Eagle is slowly but surely coming back. We'll be right back, too. The fourth and final chapter of this game between Chris and Gold Eagle is underway, and despite that 10-point blast, Exploded by the Gold Eagle beer man in the face of the Crisper Red Manizers towards the close of the third career period. They still have their work clearly cut out for them because the Crisper Red Manizers have suddenly come awake. They're up by 13 again, 88 75 after that last field goal by, by Cristobal. Marty Saldana moving the ball to the right side. Now it's Philip Cesar on him. That's a mismatch right there. Lauchenko versus Padim Israel. Manotok is using some very tall guards at this juncture. Gonzalgo again coming through. Yes, Gonzalgo has played a very good game tonight. He's been one of the bright spots for the Gold Eagle team. Yes, indeed. 
the silver lining amid the clouds. 88-77, 11 point advantage for Grispa and Willie Pearson throws up an 18 footer that fell about an inch short. Here is Bokelochenko. Oh, he faked Pearson off balance. Missed, oh, made the open shot. Yes, he still made the shot. He almost walked on the play, but instead he makes the 15 footer. 88-79, and the Crispa lead is down to just a single figure now. It's a nine point game. But him as well, try to get it inside heavy traffic to by Cristobal and the referee's whistle. Yes, the foul's going to go against Gonzalo. That's going to be his third foul. Joe, we have some stats here. Crispa shot 68% in the third quarter, while Gold Eagle shot 58%. A very high scoring, high shooting quarter for both teams. Jimmy Javier providing a screen for Mike Cristobal, but he can't seem to shake off Saldana, so he elected to give it to Pearson, who lost it in turn. But Mike Cristobal recovers. Philip Cesar works it over to Pearson inside the paint. We've got Abbe King getting right between Padim Israel and the ball. There's a lot of passing on that play. Maybe Pearson should have taken that 14-footer that he had instead of trying to pass it down low. The gold legal beer men are in the middle of a big uprising. Let's see if they can sustain this. If they can put up two more unanswered baskets, I think we're going to have a big game towards the end. Loose ball foul spotted by the ref. And here is Willie Pearson trying to drive inside heavy traffic and being caught for an offensive foul. That's Willie pushed off that time as he was going to the hoop. That's going to be his third foul. It's going to be a turnover for the Gold Eagle team.